If you have ever been to therapy, you probably have the joy of talking about coping skills. Coping skills are things that get us through challenging emotions, and whether you have a mental illness or not, you have some coping skills. Sometimes those coping skills can be negative, like overeating or substance use. Sometimes those coping skills are very useful and get you through a lot of stuff, such as art for me. Hi, hello, it's me, Unkempt Snuggle Pepper. Big disclaimer, I am not a therapist or mental health professional. These are just coping skills that I have learned about from being in DBT, and I thought it would be interesting to draw them and give some information about them. First up, I have mindfulness, which is a rather broad topic. In dialectical behavioral therapy, or DBT, Mindfulness is one of five modules. It is so important in DBT that it happens every other module. When considering what to draw for such an abstract concept, I decided to go with yoga. Yoga involves observing the body, what is moving, what is stretching, what is comfortable, and what is uncomfortable. Every time I have a therapy session after we do either chair yoga or a guided meditation, I then am asked what my observations were. So not only am I aware of my body, I'm also able to describe it. For example, a lot of times I find that my stress and my tension is carried in my shoulders to the point they raise up so high they nearly touch my ears. Guided meditation, squared breathing, prayer can all be considered parts of mindfulness. So the first thing I did was went online to find various yoga poses and determine which one I wanted to draw. Before starting each of these pieces, I went ahead and sketched them in my sketchbook to get an idea of what I wanted each one to look like. I tried a few different yoga poses, but eventually landed on this one. I began sketching it out using the pen tool in Clip Studio Paint. I then make the layer into a draft which turns it blue and I lower the opacity. This is very helpful when you're adding line work to know where your sketch is and where your line art is. It also helps me from drawing on the wrong layer because if I switch down to the draft layer and begin drawing, everything turns blue. In Clip Studio Paint, I also use a vector layer so that all of my lines are movable, much like the pen tool in Photoshop. Vector is made up of points, where raster is made up of pixels. So when I'm able to draw the line, there's the, the option to edit those points after I've put the line down. For example, where we see her leg turning red, the line had turned into a series of points, and with the object tool, I was able to readjust it. Another advantage of the vector layer and vector line work is that I am able to use the vector eraser. Unlike the hard or soft eraser, the vector eraser takes out a line up to the next point where two lines intersect. So for example, when I put the circle behind her, I was able to use the vector eraser to just swipe, swipe it away where it meets at her legs. For this series, I wanted to go with a more muted palette. I always love purples and blues, and that's what I was drawn to. I didn't want to draw an entire background or make everything into a scene, so instead I went with some geometric shapes. For this one, obviously, I picked the circle. For the shading, I already have three shades of purple that I pick out and use regularly in my webcomic. These different shades allow me to add shadows depending on how light or dark the base color is. After I have everything filled in in a satisfactory manner, I will take the layer and turn it down to about 50%. I'm really satisfied with how this one turned out. I enjoy the simplistic background in case I want to make it into a sticker one day. The next piece that I begin sketching out is building mastery. Building mastery is part of a larger skill set. Usually Building mastery is part of a larger skill set. It's part of A, B, C, please. A is for, A is for accumulating positive experiences. This means 
Accumulating positive experiences can encompass a lot of different things for different people. Basically, it means finding more things in your life that you enjoy doing or groups that you enjoy being part of. Building mastery is about learning new skills to have a feeling of accomplishment and to build towards a better life. And then the C is for coping ahead or thinking of difficult situations that are in the near future and how you would handle those difficult situations. ABC is usually placed with please skills. This is a set of skills that is used to reduce vulnerability. For example, sleep is the S in please. When we don't have enough sleep, we tend to be angry or cranky or generally not productive. So especially as someone who is neurodivergent or has a mental health diagnosis, getting adequate sleep, exercise, eating well, and taking care of physical illness are all very important in maintaining a life worth living. For my take on Build Mastery, one of the things I considered was drawing myself doing art because it's something that I enjoy getting better at. It's something that I enjoy the challenge. I watch tutorials and different videos. I look up different resources. I'm always experimenting with new mediums and new brushes in my digital art. However, I thought it might be more interesting to portray myself as someone who is learning cooking. When I was in high school, I didn't want to take home ec, so instead I took industrial tech. You know, good old shop class. And I'm someone who has almost never used a power tool. It was quite an interesting experience to be in a class where we were supposed to build things. I got an A for every drawing I did, but I got a C on the execution. Then when I worked at Michael's, I was a framer, so I would have to be putting things together and putting the hardware on the backs of frames. Of course, I'm terrified that if I get a screw that's too big, that it's going to go all the way through the frame. So I'm a little scared there. And then I'm afraid that the drill is going to pop off the screw and damage the artwork sitting next to it. But cooking is much friendlier than power tools. I'm used to the mixer and the egg beater and all that sort of stuff. However, I don't have a whole lot of experience cooking. I only know a few dishes. So I have gotten a mill subscription box I go through every plate and that has allowed me to try a lot of new recipes that I normally wouldn't gravitate towards. In addition to new main dishes, the really nice thing I like about every plate, and I tried HelloFresh, is that everything cooks together. Everything is already timed out for you, which I find really helpful rather than trying to juggle when do I put the meat on, when do I put the potatoes in. When do I start the steamable vegetables in the microwave? So to have all that laid out has made it much more accessible for me to cook a meal and have everything done around the same time. When drawing this, I was thinking about how halfway through a recipe, I kind of have that challenging moment where something has gone wrong or I'm missing an ingredient and what I can do to solve that problem or to change that circumstance. A big part of building mastery is that it does provide a bit of a challenge. Not too much of a challenge where it's impossible and frustrating, but enough of a challenge that when you have completed the task, you feel a sense of accomplishment. And this builds overall positive experiences and reduces depression. After I get the colors blocked in in this piece, I begin shading. I decide that I'm going to have my light source coming from the same side on all three pieces I do for a little bit of continuity. I also had to go back to the last one to get the eye color. Every other color I use comes from the color swatches I use for my webcomic. The one thing I kind of don't like about this piece is I, I think the hand holding the knife is a little small and I couldn't get the knife to look like a good chopping knife rather than something you would be carrying, like a machete that you would be carrying to cut through a jungle. 
The third piece that I make, I do check the facts. And I struggle a little bit with how I want it to look. I put it down in my sketchbook a couple of times and I thought I knew what I wanted. I thought I would do a magnifying glass being held up to one eye, which looks weird and, and crazy against the rest of the face. But I was really struggling with it. First, that the eye is so much bigger than the other eye and then that, that I couldn't get the hand in quite the right place. I was also trying to recreate a shirt I actually own that has a little bit of poof to it, but I couldn't seem to get that down in the magnifying glass idea. So then I come in with my second idea, which is to simply have someone in kind of a thinking pose. With the new pose, I run into two problems. One is that a little later on when I'm trying to draw my hair, I get a little lost. I have wavy hair and not quite curly hair, so it's hard to draw it without making spiral locks. And the way I drew it just looked really messy and not a good representation of what my hair actually does. So I went in after a reference from Pinterest and redrew the hair, which I was satisfied with. The other issue I ran into was getting her hands right. I say her hands, it's me. I'm drawing me. Drawing the hands probably took the most amount of draw and redraw attempts. But overall, after I started the second pose, it went a lot smoother than the first. Check the facts is useful because you're getting an outside opinion on what is going on. Checking the facts looks at things and states them in objective terms, which means rather than saying, a coworker was mad at me. It's a little objective. I don't know if they were mad unless they said I'm mad. So rather than saying they're mad at me, an objective way would be they raised their voice and it sounded like they were speaking with sarcasm. That would be more objective than they were mean to me. Checking the facts is also useful in is my emotion appropriate for what's going on? Should I be angry? that I'm late to work. And then, you know, sometimes you are. Sometimes it is the right emotion with that situation. If you fart in front of everyone, you feel embarrassment. That is an appropriate response. That's how a lot of other people will, will respond. However, it depends on, on like what level of embarrassment you're having. If you say with, with seriousness, I can never go back to this place, it was awful. I, I'm too embarrassed to ever be seen there again. Sometimes our emotion doesn't match the intensity that that situation would warrant. For me, there's two ways that I check the fact. One is when I'm by myself and I don't have another person to run the idea by or the emotion. I look at what has been happening and what emotion I have been feeling. So this is where mindfulness comes in to decide if I feel dismissed and then I feel angry to be able to recognize that and recognize that the person who said whatever to me probably didn't mean for it to come out that way. The other way I check the facts is I go to my husband and I explain the situation to him. This is especially helpful when my emotions are really high and I'm not in a good place to think logically. I am a chronic job hopper and I've been trying to stay employed without going from job to job every six to nine months. However, sometimes when I receive criticism, even though it's normal and within normal range of what a manager or a boss would tell an employee, I can get a little too sensitive and not handle that feedback well. So that when I come home, I'm in a bad mood and I have to go to my husband and be like, is this a normal moment where my manager is telling me I need to do something or is this an egregious thing and I need to look for a new job? Usually my husband has a pretty fair point on it. If he's unsure, I also have my mother-in-law and other family that I can go to to run an idea by. 
so that I know it's not me exaggerating a situation in my head or catastrophizing. I think I said that right. Anywho, that about wraps up this episode of Paint With Me. If you like this video, please consider hitting that like button, leaving me a comment, or subscribing to the channel. And here are the finished pieces.